Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. You too. Rangers. Thank you, Rangerettes. She looks good, huh? She still looks good from the watch the other day. But we're here at the TA, right outside of New Haven, Connecticut. Um, just got our inspection done. I have to get some other registration behind the scenes stuff done between me and the previous owner on a truck and uh we got everything situated so now we can go back home but so our trip out here to the uh the northeast uh it's coming to an end it's time to get back home and get back to what we know and get back to the making money part of trucking because the load i took out here basically just paid for fuel and expenses didn't really pay anything but i had to get some stuff done out here but um, I found a load yesterday that went home. Once again, they only paid for my fuel and expenses to get back home. Uh, but everything out here pays like a dollar forty to a dollar, well, a dollar twenty-five to about a dollar forty-five a mile. Going anywhere out of here doesn't matter where you're going: Texas, California, Oregon, Illinois, Florida. Doesn't matter where you're going. The loads suck they pay about half of what i'm used to so um i was out here walking around i just finished my inspection and i was walking back to my truck and uh a subscriber walked up to me he's like hey bro he said Are you youtube i said like, yeah 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 he said uh where are you going back home after this i said yeah he said oh there's a guy i usually pull for out here he said he's got a, a dedicated lane it's got an account of like piping stuff that, but it picks up four hours away in vermont four hours in the opposite direction up north i said what does it pay it says about four grand going back down to the san antonio austin area and so i said well what's the rate per mile on it he said about between 250 to 280 a mile so i calculated it even with my dead head and the load's only fifteen thousand pounds and it's dropping hook at the pickup. And I think it's dropping hook at the delivery as well. 15,000 pounds. And I can deliver it when I want to. I said, you know what? Yeah, I'll go ahead and take that load. Because the loads originally going down there pay like $2,000 going back home. Still, I got a dead hit like two or three hours either back down to Jersey or like back down into New York to go pick it up. And it still pays to... Uh, I'm sorry, like 125 to 145 a mile at like 42 to 44,000 pounds. And so I said, no, thank you. So this one weighs 15,000 pounds, pays about double. I got a dead head four hours to go get it, about 200 miles, but we'll, we'll do that. It gets me back home and it gets me back to the, uh, the region that I know where I can start making some money. And so that's what we're going to do, but she's inspected. I'm good with Landstar for another four months of my inspection. So basically every four months, every 120 days, Landstar requires us to get a Landstar DOT inspection. And so mine was uh, finally due. Went ahead and got that done. And I uh, ran some other errands that I had to get done. And we're finally ready to get back home. So, but yes, yeah, so we found a load, super light. So we're gonna be hauling butt through those mountains. I was supposed to do my 34 hour break, but we're cutting it short. I'm gonna try to work out some recap hours to get back home. But uh, but yeah, so I only have about 20 something hours left on my clock. So I'm gonna see what I can do to get it situated and uh, get some more hours back. But we're gonna have to do a 34. I was supposed to have done it today, but it's not gonna work out like that. We gotta go pick this load up today. I tried to get it for tomorrow, but he said I gotta get it today. So anyway, y'all roll that intro. We're going to Vermont to the even further in the Northeast. So you guys roll the intro, and I'll catch you guys on the other side of it.
we are in Hartford, Connecticut. Right here off of uh, Interstate 91. Typical Northeastern uh, looking kind of town.
taking that back down to Texas. I do got to figure out a 34 hour break it or somewhere. I don't know where yet, but we'll figure out later in the week. But I was really looking forward to a 34 hour break, but I couldn't turn down as low. why there's no leaves on the trees out here. It's April and there's still no leaves on the trees. Like, have y'all not hit spring yet out here or is that just
All right, y'all. We have made it. There's a bobtail there on the door. We made it out here to, uh, where are we at? Colchester, Vermont. Uh, when I got fuel earlier, guys, at the pump, it was 505 a gallon for fuel. 505 a gallon. And, uh, see my trailer over here it was 505 a gallon with the landstar discount i got it for 305 y'all two dollars off a gallon well before if a dollar 49 cents off so about a dollar 50 so we just saved a buku lot of money this our trailer right here yep this is it cool do a quick walk around actually let's go ahead and open her up and see what we got in here Fun off loading. I don't know if it's a live unload or what we're doing, but cool. It's chilly out here up north. I gotta find my jacket. And also, um, I, I thought the driver I talked to earlier told me the low pay, like $3,900 or $4,000. And I finally got the rate con in and I checked it. It actually pays $4,975, $1,000 more than what he told me. And so it actually pays about $5,000. So before the, uh, before the what? Before the deadhead, it was like 260 or 270 a mile, I think, 280 a mile, something like that. After the deadhead, we're still doing 224 a mile after the deadhead versus uh, what was it like? And 18,000 pounds, this stuff is light, versus like a dollar 34 a mile. Dollar uh, twenty, a dollar forty, somewhere in there. So we did really, really good. Ah, all right, let's get the situated. So we're just going to creep to the dock. That way I can finish out my uh, 30 minute break. And I ain't gotta worry about doing it no more today. But yeah, that's awesome. Uh, saved about $1.50 a gallon on gas, on, I mean, sorry, fuel. So of course I filled all the way up. I got every drop I could in there. But I did the math, if I only spend about $1,000 in fuel on this load, which is probably gonna be more than that, because, um, why does that trailer look crooked on that truck? We've got about a 1,700, no, a 1,900 mile trip home. gonna take about three days to get home whoop slow down and I still since I decided to give up my 34 hour break today I'm a, uh,
I'm gonna have to do it later in the week. What in the world was that? Why? Okay, it's not connected. I went ahead and opened the vents on a trailer. Ugh. Still kind of smells in there from the last load. But yeah, so I think, uh, like I said earlier, if I only spend about a thousand dollars in fuel. I'll still be bringing home about $3,000 just off this one load. So if you're new to the channel, the way it works with Landstar is uh, we get 65% of what's called the line haul. And we get 100% of the fuel surcharge. And so the fuel surcharge alone on this load is $1,000. So that's automatically to me. And then I get 65% of the, I guess it'll be like $4,000. So 65% of that, what is that, 2,600? So that plus $1,000, 3,600 bucks. I'm sorry, uh, 4,600, I think, minus fuel. So we did pretty good on this load. Shout out, like literally I was just walking away from uh, getting my truck inspected and dude walked up to me and said, hey, he just started talking to me. Because one thing about Landstar drivers, they do not give up agency codes. Like I always say, they'd rather give up their social security number rather than the agency code. That is my trailer right there. I had uh, the previous owner of this truck when I met up with him earlier, uh, gave me a generator for the truck and some other little goodies. So I had to move it from that trailer and into this one over here. But he gave me a generator and since I don't have an APU. He gave me a diesel heater too when I first bought the truck or got it from him. Uh, but I went ahead and took it out. It was up under the sleeper. It was one of those Chinese ones and it started smoking real bad one night and carbon dioxide, it was it got a little crazy. So I just turned it off and took it out the truck. And so he gave me a, a generator. Is it carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide? Whichever one is dangerous for you. If the heaters let off, feel that dip. Boom, tug test. Oh yeah, she's on there. All right. Well yeah, this load is only like 15,000 pounds, if that. I still gotta check the paperwork to make sure, but I don't think it's that heavy. So yeah, he found the battery cover box, the battery cover for the battery box, he gave that to me. This uh, fuel filter system, because I have the one with the two oil filters. Oh, duh. And then he gave me that, uh, that generator too, it's a nice one. Actually, let's add one more strap. Uh, 
hope I'm not dropping and hooking. I'm probably gonna forget this this stuff, but I'll make a note of it to myself somewhere. All right, we gotta go Mighty, Mighty Products. Actually, I need to strap the generator down too. All right, we'll see. Actually, let's see what we got back here. Okay. All right, is this going anywhere? Oh, okay. So the only ones I need to strap down are here on the end. I don't know, y'all. It's this one. I feel like it's gonna tilt this way. So we're gonna use our handy dandy mighty products. Oops. But I don't have anything to not scratch it up though. Don't tell nobody, y'all. Lord, I please don't let me forget these straps, Lord. Mighty products will kill me. Mm. Let's see so if I put that on there that way. I'm gonna want it to. Yeah, at least things are starting to look up for this week. All right, so when I put this on there, I want it to go. I always get, don't make fun of me, y'all. I always get discombobulated with these things. All right. Because with flatbed, I, you would stick it straight through, so I always get it mixed up. Actually, let's put it up higher because I feel like it tilts. Tighten it, tighten it. I just don't want it going nowhere. All right, are there any more I need to secure? <sighs> Ooh. Ugh. I feel like this whole load needs to be secured down, but. They said only two on the back, so I don't know. But I think these are okay, because these are not as tall. Yeah, I think we'll just secure the tall ones, maybe. I don't know. I know y'all probably can't see. You know what? We got time, so I need one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven straps. I don't have that many Mighty Product straps. In all honesty, I'm thinking about just taking my Mighty products and putting them in the truck. This is 
Mighty Products. That way if I forget them, I'm not forgetting my trusty dandy Mighty Product straps. What is this? This is Mighty. That goes in the truck. And this one is not Mighty. We're gonna use this one. Actually, I, I have time to pull through straps too. I might just use those. Okay, let's use some of these first. And if I need some more straps, I'll use the pull through straps. Okay, this is too flimsy to be Mighty Products. It's a cheap strap. All right, this is definitely Mighty Products. And shout out to Mighty Products straps for keeping that hazmat load safe the other day. Cause I can almost guarantee if I was using some other straps, those hazmat barrels would have flipped. It'd have been way worse. But y'all go check out my link down there in the description below. Hit that button that says more. And uh, they got all kinds of stuff. Headache racks, straps, moving blankets. Um, oops, ratchets, all kinds of flatbed equipment, moving equipment, obviously dry van equipment, like you name it, they got it. Uh, any accessories you need to make your trucking days better. I know y'all probably can't see back here. Sorry if you're blind. You can't see back here. Ah. Okay, I can't see either. All right, let's try to make this quick. All right, well, we're all strapped down. I did end up using some of the Mighty product straps. That one's strapped down. That one's strapped down. I didn't want to do it too tight because it'll scratch. And I did use some of my pull through straps. I'm not a big fan of these, but uh, I just use them on the smaller ones and the ones that are not as heavy. This one here, I put the strap behind it. Got one here. This is a mighty product strap. This one is not a mighty product strap. It's too weak, too flimsy. Uh, I got one on here and I've got one here so this one was tricky because I couldn't get the strap back there behind it to wrap around it I couldn't even get it that way so this one I have going across like that which I'm praying that uh, that'll do it actually I'm probably going to take this and move it back that way. That way we can kind of hug it some more, but that's the best I can do on this one, but it's, I don't think that's going anywhere. Load securement, y'all. Make sure your load is strapped down. I think I can technically get a ticket for unsecured load if I were to get pulled over, but with all the mountain driving that we're doing, the hills and all that stuff, start and stop in traffic, and the way I drive, this one was tricky because if you strapped it anywhere like up here, this strap just slid up that way. So I got that one down there at the bottom. Actually, a twist in this. Yeah, we're good on that one. But yeah, y'all, I think we're good. when they strapped down. I don't like how they did that. And then, I think that one's good, okay. They strapped this one down too, even this one was, they actually strapped it up here. I'm the one that moved it down there because I think it'll have a better chance. All right, y'all. You cannot forget my stuff if I'm doing a drop and hook. Ah. Yeah, I think we're good. 
took an extra 30 minutes, but it's a peace of mind, you know? Peace of mind, whether it being a legal ordeal or my whole load tipping over in the mountains. These doors are stiff. Landing gear up. Yeah, he'll go on up. Get my hand in the glove. Goodness. Come on. Where we at? But yeah, on the paperwork, it said only two straps required or something like that. Needed a lot more than two straps. So y'all comment down below on Monday's video, that post. Because I think that's what I'm dropping this load off on Monday. On Monday's video. Actually on Saturday's and on Monday's video. Comment down below. Don't forget your straps. So I can see those comments. I'm gonna see who all remembers. On Saturday's video, and on uh, Monday's video, please remind me, get the straps. Blow my comment section up. If I go home this weekend, which I should be able to, I'm gonna get the generator and throw it in my pickup truck and take it on home. See how these shocks are holding up. Good, airbags are good. Locked in place. Cool, cool, cool. I think we're good, y'all. Yo, and these floors really do make a big difference. I need to get through here and sweep and blow out a lot of the trash out of there. All right. Uh, let's put this in for uh, Dayton, Texas. Yeah, we're about 1,865 miles away. Uh, which way do I want to go? Uh, do I want to take 90 across? Going through Nashville, going through Memphis. And I think we'll take the way we came, I guess, huh? Let's see, two weather warnings. Huh. Yeah, let's go back the way we came. Twenty-seven hours away. After today, we're we'll knocking down to about twenty hours. Okay, paperwork. What's my weight? 2,700 pounds, that can't be right. Oh, it's several. 2,762, is that my only weight? 2,700 pounds? Nah, it's gotta be more than that, right?
Hope y'all enjoy the scenery on this trip. Look at that old International Eagle over there. Didn't close my door all the way. But yeah, definitely a blessing that I saved all that money on fuel. Plus the fuel discount. I mean, um, the, uh, the weight. Not the weight, but the rate. The amount. The revenue being more than what I thought it was going to be. Yeah, I want to go back the way I came just for peace of mind somewhat, knowing where I'm going. Plus all the um, the toll roads going through like Ohio and stuff. I can't even feel this weight, y'all. Uh, I was gonna turn on my jakes, but it's okay. But yeah, peace of mind, low strap down is not going nowhere. Plus, I don't have a seal on there, so I can go through there and check it when I need to, kind of throughout the trip. Wow, 1,900 miles. See this drop visor, I can't see the light. We need to get that thing polished and add some more lights on it. Uh, come on, light. Yeah, this trailer feels empty, y'all. Uh, by far. Slow was definitely a blessing. Sometimes it's little things like this. You know, to remind you that God still be thinking about you. Even though you're having a hard week, little things like this, like, the, like I said, the, the fuel savings, you know, plus this load and how just a random Random guy, you know, really unselfish, you know, put me on game with this. So you know who you are, I didn't get your name dude, but shout out to you. Crossing the street, okay.
speed limit 55. Uh oh. Slow my behind down.
Uh, let's see. We're just outside of. Where are we at? So we're not on 84 yet. I'm sorry, 87. We're not too far from Lake George, French Mountain, Queensbury, Lake Sunnyside, Glens Falls. We're out here on uh, 149, literally out here in the middle of nowhere. Ugh. I forgot to book a parking spot earlier today. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it short here. I found there's a parking spot right here. I mean, I could risk it and get down the interstate and not be able to find, sorry y'all, find parking. But uh, I see eateries around here. And so uh, I think they have showers in here too. So they got everything I need here to be able to park for the night. But uh, definitely been a long day, but uh, thankful that the day did get better or the week got better. Cause it was starting to, uh, like this whole week was just really messing me up. But thankfully, you know, we're looking to do better this week. Um, yeah guys, I really have nothing to say other than Vermont is freaking beautiful. We are in New York, uh, New York state. Um, it is beautiful back there too. So I wanted to get some footage of some time lapse of like Vermont because Vermont is one of those states in like upstate New York, those are places nobody ever talks about. When we talk about California, we talk about New York City, we, we talk about Houston, Texas, Dallas, Texas, maybe San Antonio, Texas, uh, Chicago, Orlando, Miami, Tampa. You know, we talk about those cities, you know, Philadelphia, Washington, DC, but we don't ever talk about like Vermont you know, in cities in, or little small towns in Vermont or like, like I said, anywhere outside of New York City. So I wanted to time lapse that for you guys so you can see what it looks like, the back roads and like the corners, you know, of America. A lot of y'all don't live in America. Uh, some of y'all don't get to travel too much. And that's one purpose that I do the time lapse. Not everybody likes the time lapse, but there's a lot of people who do like the time lapse. Actually, if you like the time lapse, comment down below. I wanna see how many of y'all actually like the time lapse. And if you don't like the time lapse, also comment down below, take a vote. But that way y'all can see the backwoods, you know, of uh, of the United States. Like I said, some of y'all can't travel or won't travel. And then some of y'all don't even live in the States. But to show y'all, like, like I said, the backwoods, the back roads, the places that nobody ever thinks to go, you know, in the United States. Well, y'all get to see them here on the Long Star Texas Ranger uh, YouTube channel. But, uh, but yeah, hopefully this week it's better. Hopefully we can get home with no complications. The truck is just breezing through uh, these roads with no weight on us. And it really looks like, guys, that our weight is only 2,762 uh, 2, pounds. Like, not even 3,000 pounds. So we're breezing, breezing through these back roads. And when I hit the interstate, oh man, you know, it's game over then. Like, nice knowing you. If y'all see me on the road, I'm gonna be on the left lane. Holler at me on the CB. You only gonna see me for a split second. Yes, I do have tape on my hand. I am messing up my finger earlier. I don't have any band-aids, but it just messed up like the nail part of it. So I'm gonna keep this on there until. No, I wasn't flicking nobody off and my finger got hurt. You know, even though some of y'all drivers out here deserve it if, if I did do that. But, uh, but yeah, guys, thank y'all so much for joining me today. Uh, definitely a better day. Uh, past our uh, land star inspection, um, he did tell me uh, give, give me a list of things to look over in the next couple of weeks that I may need to get fixed on the truck. Um, the inspector did. Uh, turns out the rate was better than what we thought it was going to be on this load, and we saved a crap ton of money on fuel today. So let me turn these lights off. Uh, now I gotta do some editing. So, but it's eight thirty right now. Uh, we are 1,772 miles away. Basically, it says we're 25 hours away on the dot. So I'm going to try to knock out a few miles, to, a few hours tomorrow, and then try to knock it down until we can knock it out. Because uh, actually, how, many, how much time do I have on my clock? Okay, I got 13 hours left on my clock. So I got a full day of driving I can do. I might try to knock that out tomorrow. I don't know yet. Do a 34. So I got 13 hours on my 70 hour clock. 
And so there's one more day of driving. So I was trying to knock it down to about 10 hours left, but like I said, I didn't book a parking spot. So we do, so today is Tuesday. Let's say I knock out five hours, eight hours tomorrow, they'll knock it down to 17 hours left, which I can knock that out. Which could have been perfect if I could have put in five more hours today and I could have knocked out uh, Friday, Friday and Saturday driving. Dang it, man. Hmm. I can still do that. I can still no. Had I knocked it out anyway, I got some stuff to figure out, guys. But anyway, thank y'all for tuning in. I will catch you guys at noon Central Standard Time on the next one.